Hi, this is Dr. Damon Miller. I'm your Organic MD. And this is Carlisle Koash. Welcome to the Organic MD video cast. This is part two in our StarGuard series. So take it away, Dr. Miller. Well, today we talked uh, the last time, the first talk was about the genetics of StarGuard disease, which is basically considered a juvenile form of macular degeneration. Um, the traditional thinking is that you get the abnormal gene from both parents rather than just from one. And so it's a, it comes on a little stronger and a little younger, the disease. But um, some of the research into this disease has shown that the, the gene that is abnormal is a gene that codes for uh, enzymes and things that control your production of ATP and energy regulation in the cell. So a a ATP? Adenosine triphosphate. It's basically the, the gasoline that runs the cell. Your uh, food that you eat gets broken down by digestion um, to a certain point and then carried to the cells where it's further metabolized, digested, combusted, and the energy from those molecules is converted into high-energy phosphate bonds, three of them, adenosine triphosphate. And those, uh, that all happens in the mitochondria. That ATP goes out to the cell and provides energy for anything that's happening in the cell that needs energy. And uh, so that's just uh, fundamental for every cell of every living organism really is ATP, uh, not just human beings. But so that there's abnormality in the ability to produce energy. But the uh, one of the things you have to realize is that a lot of people, whether they have a juvenile form of a disease like Stargard or age-related macular degeneration, uh, a lot of the people that I see and a lot of the people with these problems, they go for many years, even decades, with completely normal vision. So one of the things to try and understand what we're doing here and what we're talking about is how in the world do you live all those years, all those decades with completely normal vision if you have a gene that's abnormal? Hmm. Um, and the, the way you do that is your body takes care of things. And if your body starts to fall apart a little bit, you get too toxic, too sick, too run down, poor nutrition, all kinds of things that can be obstacles to being healthy. And then these diseases show themselves. But, um, you know, just talking about the research, I could make this talk really short because the significant research going on about Stargardt disease is about none, really. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, there's some things that are going on for all of this class of diseases, for all of the macular dystrophies and retinopathies, these degenerative diseases of the eye. Um, one of the things that's being looked at is use of supplements. Um, and the thing to remember, the, the ophthalmologists have been very late to the game in this. They just started investigating whether supplements had any role um, rather recently, whereas the um, other people have been looking at supplements and their use in these diseases since the 50s. And so there's a really strong body of research that supplements have some value, but all of the work over 60 years of research into the use of supplements shows that the best that supplements have been shown to do is to slow the progression of the disease. They don't stop it. They don't reverse the disease. They just slow it down. If that's all you did, that'd be valuable, but you can do more. I, I think I'd read somewhere that there's uh, some research do, being done around use of stem cells and things like that for for this kind of illness. There, it is. There's research in stem cells for all of these diseases for macular degeneration, Stargardt disease, retinopathies, or retinitis pigmentosa. Um, but you know, to understand what you read about in the news, you have to kind of understand the the medical model for research. Um, research mostly these days is done by corporations who are trying to make something that they will eventually be able to sell to you. And I'm not trying to say that's bad, but the government backed out of research really uh, under Reagan. Um, there's very little money from the federal government to fund basic research anymore. And so the government decided that the drug companies and the pharmaceutical companies and um, corporations that they could do the research but their charters say that they can only do research if there's some kind of a product at the end of the line that they can sell. I mean, they, they're mandated to only do things that are going to make money. And so there's precious little basic research uh, into this. But even the research is being done, even the research on stem cells. Um, we just put out our new book, Stem Cells Heal the Eyes, but Stem Cells Heal Your Eyes. That's by me, Dr. Miller, and by Carlisle Koash. But the... Uh, we use stem cells in the title there. We're talking about adult stem cells. We're talking about the stem cells that we all were born with and that we carry around with us everywhere we go, the adult stem cells that play a role in fixing anything that breaks in us, including complex tissues like the eye. And so 
the uh, the the real interesting work is how do you make your adult stem cell system work better, and that's what we talk about in our book. But when you read about research and stem cells in the news or press releases, radio, TV, things like that, they're talking about research that is trying to take your own stem cells or use embryonic stem cells or do some kind of outside stem cells, something that could be created, made into a product, and then sold back to you. And what's interesting is that that work is always considered to be 10 years away. You know, in 10 years, we'll have something. It's been 10 years away for the last 30 years, and it's still 10 years away. And next year, it's still going to be 10 years away. So we really encourage you, if you're uh, plagued by these diseases or worried about them, to get a copy of Stem Cells Heal Your Eyes. You can get it on Amazon. And really read that and uh, kind of stay in touch with the work that we have and the posts we have on organicmd.com. So I'm, I guess I'm curious then, um, you know, what hope is there for people with this illness if there's not a lot of research happening and other things like that? What's, what are some of the things that they can do, basically? Well, we've gathered, you know, we've, um, I learned these methods of treatment from Grace Halloran, who's been doing this work since the 70s. Um, there's been a lot of data gathered. We've seen thousands of people and seen a lot of people get better. But again, back to that medical model, um, we have outcomes data. If people do these complex things we show them to do, they get better. But that's not something that modern medicine really knows how to make sense out of. You know, it's one thing if, you know, the, the science of medicine is premised on reducing a problem to a single variable. So if you're trying to show does a drug versus a placebo work, that's what the science of medicine is all about. If you're trying to show if we have you change your diet, change your lifestyle, do exercises, acupressure, work with microcurrent stimulation, color therapy, do all these things, and you get better, um, the research side of medicine throws up its arms in, in desperation and says, well, we, we can't study that. There are too many too, variables. Too many things to track. Too many things time. to track, and, and who knows? And the fact that all these people get better that just gets discounted or dismissed. And so um, you asked, is there hope? There is a lot of hope for these diseases. I have seen a lot of people with Stargardt disease stabilize and then get better. Um, it takes some work. It takes time. But there is a lot of hope. And that's uh, really what the purpose of these talks is about, is to let you know that there's more than what your ophthalmologist is telling you about. Hmm. Oh. So the next talk, we're going to be talking about uh, what you can do, just the basics of what you can do to treat these diseases. And again, this is not the talk that you would get from your ophthalmologist, but we invite you back for the third and final talk on Stargardt disease. So thank you and uh, keep tuned in and we'll see you soon. Thank you.